Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, hey, welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. This is the dirt sheet. Yeah, I, I, I was expecting you or waiting for you to get to that. Pro wrestling news here on the dirt sheet. This is the only place you need to be going for pro wrestling news. You like our new pose? 2017 new pose. This is like our Young Bucks this equivalent. Not, yeah, exactly. It's the equivalent. It's a, it's a lazier leaning back version of the Young Bucks. Yeah, there you go. I'm not doing that anymore. I like this. I like this. I you feel like, like you like the haunch. You like the the the, 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 the lean over your microphone. You know why I like this? Huh. Because if I could have any job throughout the history of time, would it be Guy Fieri's. Because he has like when he when, when he eats a big sandwich or something, he always leans over it like this, and that's what you do to your microphone. Remember when you used to brush your teeth back in college? Oh yeah, and you'd hunch over like this, like it was so exhausting to brush. <laughs> oh, your teeth. it wasn't that. It's was just like a brush, and then like all the all the toothpaste just fall out of my mouth directly in the sink, so I didn't get in my shirt. Uh, that's why. <laughs> um, no, it's. It's like news ca- news anchor, but like uh, way back, like in the sixties. Oh, you're engaged. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like okay. they used to, they used to. They, they, there's like a cigarette over here. Yeah, and they'd be reading their thing, and it's just like the most casual thing ever. And like yeah. it was always an ugly dude. That's what I would do. And I have like big thick glasses. Yeah, I like the glasses parts. And like a buzz cut. That'd be great. Yeah, and it, like a short sleeve, a short sleeve shirt with a tie. You know, like the like the Sipowitz thing. Yeah, but it was a newscaster. Yeah. That's my thing. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is we're talking about wrestling. Wrestling, not Kennedy getting shot. Um, it's the dirt sheet. We're available on a podcast everywhere, including iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, iHeartRadio. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even if you're watching us on the YouTube, it's awesome if you were to hit the download subscribe button mm-hmm. because when I got on the iTunes, when I got on the iTunes, or my phone, I don't even know where my phone is. You lost your phone. I lost my. I lost my phone. Mess today, enough about, oh, your phone's right there. I see it. But enough about your phone. We're here to talk about professional wrestling. Specifically, news about professional wrestling. It's my old phone case, not actually. Oh, phone. okay. Well, it tricked me. Um, everybody's talking about Wrestle Kingdom 11. Yeah, we did a video on it yesterday. Check it out and find out why it's the best match in history. Possibly. Yes. But yeah, that's the match everybody's talking about. Okada sure. versus, versus Omega. Omega for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Correct. Um, and prior to Wrestle Kingdom 11, Kenny Omega spoke to Sports Illustrated's Extra Mustard mm-hmm. and uh, had some interesting things to say about wrestling. Yes, right, place he did. In wrestling. Yeah. And the WWE. Steve, would you like to uh, read some quotes here? I'd love to if I could bring up the notes. I have not done that okay, yet. Okay, I guess I'll get started. Um, this is all, as I said, from a Sports Illustrated interview. Keep in mind that he is the with Kenny hottest. Omega. He is the hottest non WWE wrestler. There is no argument to be made there. Where is any of the stuff in my drive? The server encountered an error. You have problems. I'll read. Yeah, you read, buddy. This is uh, from the interview. Quote, this is Kenny Omega speaking. Yes. Quote, I'm eating, breathing, and shitting wrestling right now, Omega said. That's great. When, I wake up in the mo- in, when I'm waking up in bed in the morning and my bones and my joints are aching, and I know I'm not old, old, but I know there are a lot of younger talent floating around their roster. I'm wondering, they're WWE, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Why in the hell are these guys not rising up? Why are they not doing what it takes to be better? Are they so happy to be a cog in the WWE machine that they're just happy to be where they are? Dude. Are they just satisfied to see WWE as a name on their paycheck every week? Why can I keep getting better and pushing the envelope to have these matches of the year, but no one even can, and no one else can even come close? AJ Styles has been great, but he's been great forever. Why is there no one else? Dang! You're really calling people out. We kind, you know, what's funny, dude, is that we kind of talked about this a little bit. I made this point with Cesaro. Yeah, that I felt like last week, it, it his match against who did he? Carl uh, uh, Anderson. Yes, another great wrestler. Yes, I felt like Cesaro is the only guy in the WWE that seems to want to do new things yeah but you know, i think i think what omega is talking about here is more than just adding a couple moves to your arsenal week after week mm-hmm. you know he's talking about really pushing the envelope in terms of storytelling in terms yeah. of of level of performance yeah because he continues 
Um, everyone is afraid to stand out. Everyone is afraid to make history. They just want to be a normal motherfucker in, res in wrestling, being a wrestler, collecting a paycheck, and telling their friends, I'm a WWE superstar. For me, that's the worst shit ever. Ooh. Yeah. Well, he is like the best wrestler right now. So. Mm -hmm. um, he and AJ, is, is it's 1A and 1B. Well, what's your... He also said something about... um. Uh, I forget who the interview is with. I asked you to dig this quote up. I don't think you did. Is it from this uh, this Sports Illustrated interview? Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. He said the WWE seems to be hiring people right now just to hire them. Oh, I didn't notice it in this interview, so it could be a different thing. Okay. He's, yeah, he basically was kind of half referring to the UK tournament. Yeah. How the WWE just seems to be snapping people up just to get them, just to just so they'll, they're under the WWE's and banner. And they just kind of languish. In, and they kind of languish, exactly. In the mid-card, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know, and he also, like a while ago, back when the Cruiserweight Classic was happening, he had some words about Kota Ibushi mm -hmm. saying, you know, he's a massive star. Why are they going to bring him in as a what he calls a junior? Mm -hmm. You know, because they brought him into the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so he said, you know, Kota Ibushi is much bigger. So Kenny Omega, he's got some, you know. And he also said in this interview that he'd rather be a, a legend that never went to the WWE. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's calling them out. He wants yeah. them to step their game up. Yeah. And the funny thing is, it's kind of, you know, so we talked about this a little bit in, in the Wrestle Kingdom video. One thing that Japan does that I kind of, that New Japan does that I, I don't know. What, what's your take on this? The, the idea that they don't protect the neck as, and it's, this is a, this is a small thing in a larger p picture. Mm-hmm. That New Japan will let their guys do more, do pile drivers and stuff like that, but possibly to the detriment of their of their future health. Yeah, I mean, Will Ospreay is already talking about dialing it back, yeah. and he's yeah. what twenty? He's like what twelve years old? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mid twenties. Yeah. Um, the Young Bucks are saying they already have problems with their necks and backs. Backs. Yeah. And the WWE, they do kind. They limit people to what they can do. Yeah, but the moves. I mean, I, and I'm, I'm not gonna diminish what you're saying because I, I agree with you to to for the most the part. The moves is a small part of the overall thing. I mean, regardless if you're doing pile drivers or not, there's a lot of impact that's happening to your back 300 days a year if you're working sure. for WWE. If you're working yeah, for yeah, New yeah. Japan or Ring of Honor, your schedule might not be as intense. Right. And so maybe one would think, okay, well, I'll have to worry about taking bumps 300 days a year, maybe 150 days a year. So I'll go, for, especially for special shows, I'll give a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure that uh, Dragon Suplex spot from uh, Wrestle Kingdom that yeah. Okada took off the top rope. Yeah. I'm sure he's not doing that every night. Oh, yeah, no, no, That's no. That's maybe one, two. Yeah. Still, I mean, the 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 risk involved is intense because he could have very easily landed right on top of his head and broke his neck Yeah, easily. Going the other way, though, this also illustrates a point that I brought up on the last, on the last um, SmackDown uh, show that we did, I think, in that I said, I think it was, maybe it was the wild card finals one. Maybe it was maybe last week. Mm -hmm. Why don't they do that every week? Why don't they bring it Every week, why don't they bring it? Well, you're talking every specifically in terms of the storylines, in terms of I was, interesting, I, exactly, captivating, yeah. story captivating storyline. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I know, like, I, I don't know exactly what New Japan's format is in terms of their weekly programming. Like, we watched the New Year's Dash, we watched the first half of it or first yeah. third of it, and you know, it's obvious that they're not killing it every. If that's what they do every week, yeah, they're not killing it every yeah. single week, yeah. But I don't know. I just, I do get the, get, I get his point. I think his general point is you have all this talent. Why aren't you guys putting on the six star matches? Yeah. Why aren't you guys yeah. putting on four and a half to five star matches when you have all this talent? Why, why isn't the talent out there in the WWE? And is it, do you think it's a talent thing or is it, what are their, what are they allowed to do by the people paying their checks? I think it's predominantly that because if you look at what Kevin Owens did, in Ring of Honor and Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, what uh, Seth Rollins did in Ring of Honor. They were doing stuff in there that they haven't even thought about doing yeah. in WWE. And I think a lot of that is, some of it is is safety procedures, I think, like the yeah. pile drivers. I completely understand that. Um, um, and doing too many crazy top rope type moves. The risk involved, especially for a, comp a publicly traded company like WWE, is probably far too great. Yeah. Um, when it comes to stuff like, that spot at Wrestle Kingdom or the the Young Bucks doing crazy stuff, that's a decision individual wrestlers have to make whether mm -hmm. they're willing to, to take those risks, put their bodies on the line for to entertain the fans. With the I'm sure they totally know the risk that they can be uh, impairing their 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 quality of life in the future yeah. when they're you know 50, 60 years old. It's entirely possible. But um, I totally went off the rails. What I was going to say. No, it's fine. The, I think, but but. 
countering the original point I make and the point that you're making here, you could have gotten rid of the dragon sleeper or the dragon suplex. Yeah. You could have gotten rid of Kenny Omega leaping from the top rope over the barricade in both this match and the Naito match. You could have gotten rid of those. You could have had that final sequence. Yeah. And there was no, there was nothing there. Nobody, nobody's neck was at risk there. Yeah. yeah You're yeah. still putting on an amazing match. Yeah, I know. And you just don't get that. You don't get that level well, as of like. We also talked about in the Wrestle Kingdom video, um, the the level of storytelling. I knew nothing really yes. about the stories going on in New Japan Pro Wrestling going into Wrestle Kingdom 11. But every match, there was a story self-contained mm-hmm. in that match that I could get into. I didn't. I didn't need to know any of the larger narratives. I knew there was these three factions that I was guessing were vying for power. But I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I you know some matches I didn't know who the I mean I know the Bullet Clubs are is is a heel faction mm-hmm. at least in theory yeah but in a lot of matches I didn't know necessarily who was the heel or the face but it didn't matter yeah because the story that was being told in the match was captivating and engrossing enough that I got into it yeah well it's funny he mentions AJ Styles here and we yeah. had him as our wrestler of the year all of you in the Friendo Awards had him yeah as the wrestler of the year he was a wrestler of the year um, the WWE seems to be in a bit of a transitionary period in terms of where they're getting their talent from. There's a massive influx. They're totally raiding the indies right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. They're totally raiding New Japan right mm-hmm. now. They're or at getting, least they're trying to. They're trying to. I mean, they did, you know, our, this time last year, we were getting rumors that AJ, Shinsuke, and uh, the Gallows and Anderson had given their notice. Mm-hmm. And then there was some confusion as to whether or not they're going to TNA. No, they ended up going to WWE. So that continues. But they also, what's the weakest, who is the weakest link right now? In the main event scene on Raw. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. And what is Roman Reigns? He is a homegrown WWE talent. So you have AJ Styles. You know Kevin Owens can put on a fantastic match. Him and Rollins, who also spent plenty of time on the Indies. Him and Rollins put on a barn burner on Raw a couple weeks back. Yeah. Um, You have all this great talent that is ready to put it all together. Yes. But then you push... Guys like Roman Reigns, who I'm sorry, need somebody to carry him. Well, they, they guys like Roman Reigns need seasoning. They need yeah. time out there working in high school gyms. Yes. So they learn how to work a crowd. They yeah. learn how to give promos. Yeah. But it, it makes me wonder if it's if if there's a, a confluence of things, and one of them is is the homegrown talent they push, Roman Reigns, mm-hmm. but also. It makes me wonder if that's going to be one of the things that we see changed when Vince is gone in whatever capacity he's gone, retired or dead, whatever. Mm-hmm. It makes me wonder because we've seen what Triple H has been able to do with NXT and they do the same. If you if you think about NXT, if you think about TakeOver, Toronto, where you could have stepped into that revival DIY match without knowing anything yes. about them. Yes. And even in their presentation, like watching them come out to the ring, you know exactly who the revival is. Yeah. DIY comes out, you pretty much know yeah. who they are. Yeah. And then you watch that match and you're enthralled. Yeah. And you didn't need to know anything about what happened before. Yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Samoa Joe, they come out to the ring. If you've never seen them before, they come out to the ring, you know their story. Mm-hmm. Their story is told right there. Mm-hmm. So it makes me wonder if we're in a transitionary period where maybe what he's talking about will come to fruition. But I still think that at least WWE as it exists now, I mean, they, beyond putting limits on what wrestlers can do in terms of the safety aspect, Mm -hmm. I think they put a limit on what they can do just performance-wise. So each wrestler has their signature moves. Yeah. And they have their styles. Like Shinsuke, I know Shinsuke can wrestle all sorts of different styles. Mm -hmm. But at NXT, they're quite obviously just limiting, limiting him to being a striker. Yeah. And that kind of bums me out. Yeah, I know. I, I wish know. they would let him because, you know, I've, I've seen the last half of his match against AJ. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, he relies on striking in that match, but he does more. Yeah. And I wish they would just not say, okay, Shinsuke, you're going to be a striker. Yeah. You're the king of strong style, so you're going to kick and punch and, and deliver elbows and knees. And that's what you're going to do. Let him do more because he can. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Let these wrestlers who, who have managed to assimilate – various styles from around the world into their style. Let them actually wrestle that way. And, and we'll, we see that sometimes in NXT, like, uh, but still all the same, everybody there still has, you know, their, their five or six moves that they will do every match that the fans know and the fans yeah. will pop for. Yeah. And everything else feels like in the, in the context of the match moves to transition to those five or six moves. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I agree. And in that respect, I wonder if it's ever going to change, because if the anecdotes are true, that Triple H feels everybody has their place in the grander play of things, then that might be one reason why people are limited to do certain things. Yeah. Um, in and, which case, you know, that's it, a bummer. And they might, you know, for, for special shows or stuff like WrestleMania, they might bust out a few moves they don't do Was it you regularly. Was it somebody on Twitter that said that they looked at UHA Nation's old stuff? Someone on Twitter, yeah. And and he was he did way more things than they evidently allow him to do in the WWE. Yeah. So, um, so but I also like the, that Kenny's putting the WWE on blast yeah. because, you know, as much as the WWE wants him, you know, when you're when you're uh, some advice like to my friend Cedric Alexander dealing with women. All mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're after <laughs> it's the hard to get thing, you know, it's like you're going to be for whatever reason, you're going to be more attracted to somebody who's kind of dogging you. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Who, you know, you know, they like you, you know, they want to be part of your deal. Yeah. But they're dogging you a little bit. Yeah. It's like, you said, you said, I mean, said in, I got to lose some weight really? in, this, in this whole uh, interview here. Uh, you know, he, he blasted WWE a little bit. But at no point does he ever say, "I'm not going to the WWE." Exactly. But, exactly. But, you know, I I think if if Kenny Omega can get a deal that he likes with WWE and not just be another cog, he Kenny, would probably consider it. Kenny knows exactly what he's doing, mm-hmm. and he's in such a good position because I'm sure he's totally fine being a legend who never went to the WWE, who everybody knows decided not to go to the WWE, and there's some there's a special appeal there. Yeah. But in the end. I think he's going to want to prove that he can that he can be the biggest of all time. Yeah, he's so good. If he gets an AJ Styles type deal, one I wouldn't be surprised. My debut in the main event of WrestleMania, mm-hmm. thirty-five, or debut at the Royal Rumble and win it, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, give him yeah. a year, and let him uh, win the uh, IWGP title, mm-hmm. carry it for a few months. Yep, huge yep. name. Yep. I wonder if this time next year, what are we going to be talking about? Are we talking about, oh, there's rumblings that Omega is going to be signing? Is there rumbles? I don't know. It depends when his contract's up. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, this seems I, like I don't what? have the notes. I want the notes in front of me. I don't me. know why they're not coming up. They're not. Can you email them to me really quick? Okay. You just do that. What's next? What are we talking about next? next Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, uh, good segue to uh, another uh, wrestler. Yeah. Of independent. Yeah. International renowned. Yeah. Former, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Wrestle Kingdom 11 yet, former Ring of Honor. World champion Kyle O'Reilly apparently did not want to resign with Ring of Honor. So one of the kind of shockers at, from coming out of Wrestle Kingdom 11 was uh, uh, Adam Cole, baby, becoming a three-time Ring of Honor world champion. And we both thought since it wasn't a Ring of Honor show that they wouldn't, uh, the title wouldn't change hands. You'd figure, you know, it's it's their world title, their show. Yeah, that that's where they'd want to change uh, change the title, but evidently. Uh, ProWrestlingSheet.com has reported first. What's the first one? <coughs> need some water. <coughs> Been drinking water. Yeah. ProWrestlingSheet.com was the first to report. Kyle O'Reilly said, eh, eh. "He's instead going to weigh his options." Dave Meltzer from Wrestling Observer said, "Kyle O'Reilly, uh, WWE really high on him. Regal really high on him. NXT is Kyle O'Reilly going to be bound?" To go to NXT, and if so, what do you think? I think we talked about this a little bit in the uh, Wrestle Kingdom <sighs> recap. You posed the question: What is his ceiling? What do you think his ceiling is? And I feel like it, I feel like he's he's got mid card, main roster mid card. I said in that video, and I stand by this because I said it about an hour ago. Um, I haven't changed my mind since then. Well, that's good. No new information has come to light that that, that no, would lead no. you to change your mind. No, okay. I watched New Year's Dash, and, and he was there, and I felt the exact same way after yes. watching him. I feel like he's a guy who could go big places in the WWE if he went to the WWE when he was 32, 33, if or 34. If you followed the example of Kenny Omega, take some time, build your own brand, well, gain Ken, experience. Kenny Omega's special. I'm, he, no, I understand Kenny Omega's Finn special. Balor. Yeah, Finn, Finn Balor. Finn Balor is perfect. I yes. think the Finn Balor, and let's be honest, they're not that, like Kenny Omega and Finn Balor, both kind of up there. Finn Balor, you know, he, he joined the WWE, I think, at 34, yeah. 33, something like that. Yeah. Came in a little bit late. Um, but after wrestling for a dozen or so years, getting experience all over the world. Exactly. Not rushing himself to, to the WWE. Immediately a top guy in NXT. And yep. then because of that, immediately a top guy. Yep. And all, immediately got the universal title and then got injured. Yeah. Um, Kyle O'Reilly, I feel, I mean, I don't, I don't know enough about him. 
But I feel like when I see him, I'm like, oh man, this guy's gonna be like this guy's gonna be stud in three years. Mm-hmm. Right now, I think it's too early. Mm-hmm. It's just it's too early. I, I like him though. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got he's got a cool MMA. I, I think he's got probably some longevity to him because of the MMA style of wrestling that he does. Although he works really stiff. He does, yeah. Um, Not Shibata stiff, but pretty stiff. But on the other hand, there, there's, there is the, the appeal of let me seize this opportunity while it's here. I, I understand wrestlers that want to, you know, that have accomplished things in other promotions and seeing if they can mm-hmm. reset level of success in the largest promotion in the world. I completely understand that. Yeah. Do you think? Completely. I wonder. I wonder. Did they pull the old trick where? They put a title on somebody thinking that it's going to get them to stay. Maybe. Because he was, kind of, I'm not going to say he's an oddball choice. I know he's been around for a while, but I was surprised when well, Adam he has, Cole. He has a story with Adam he's Cole. He's got a story with years. him, yeah. yeah. I just thought it was kind of surprising. I'm mm-hmm. like, you know, Jay Lethal, I totally get. Like, he's, you know, legend basically in Ring of Honor. Adam Cole, big name. And then Kyle O'Reilly. I was, I was kind of surprised about that. I kind of looked at it as if they were trying to. To, to create a new star. Yeah, I, I figured that, That's too. That's how I looked at it. I, I didn't, I didn't know anything too. about his contract, but he you know he worked the Wrestle Kingdom show with no mm-hmm. no deal. Yeah. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Maybe, maybe, maybe... Oh, so his shit has actually expired already. Yeah, expired at oh. end of 2016. Oh, so, okay, that's right. They do those, yeah. They do from, like, January 1st. Uh, okay. So, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, maybe he'll end up full-time in New Japan. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Although what? his tag team partner re-signed with Ring of Honor, Bobby yeah, Fish. Bobby Fish, yeah. So... Re-Dragon. It's Red Dragon. Re, I know, I know. I think re-dragon's funny, though. Know? It is. Dragon again. To dragon again. To dragon again, yeah. So we'll see. You know, um, let me ask you this, though. If he does go to WWE, mm-hmm. is he a major enough name? Yes! Oh, are you kidding me? Your prediction know. is done, man. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's done. What do you mean? I, he was the... He was the Ring of Honor world champion. Had you champion. really heard of him before that, though? He just lost... No, but I don't know <laughs> shit. He just lost the title at Wrestle Kingdom, the biggest... Know. I don't know. Oh, are you kidding me? I don't know. If you, if yes, I don't know about that. If if I had asked you this during the predictions episode, I said Kyle O'Reilly, you'd have been like, oh yeah, though no, he if he signs, then I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, for Mm-mm. sure. Kyle O'Reilly, uh, and Marty Skrull, all those guys, those are all big names. Marty Skrull is yeah. Mar- you think Marty Skrull's not a bigger name than Kyle O'Reilly? No, Marty Skrull is a bigger name. He is so not. He yeah, is. he is. How many times has he won the Ring of Honor World Championship? He's only been in Ring of Honor for like a few months. Exactly my but point. But Marty, Marty Skrull just had like a write-up in Sports Illustrated or something. So Kyle what? O'Reilly's never had that. Oh, I'm sure he probably has. You think, Marty, that you have no idea what you I had literally about. never heard of Kyle O'Reilly until he had this match with Adam Cole. I heard of Marty Skrull months ago. Neither have I, but you and I both know that you and I don't know what we're talking about in that realm quite yet. We're getting there, man. We're but learning. I, but I had heard of Adam Cole. I had heard of Jay Lethal. I knew the Briscoes. I knew I knew a lot of people in Ring of Honor. Um, I know. I had heard I had heard of Redragon before. Yeah, I'd, I just I'd didn't know of, who I'd was in it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and I was always confused. I'm like, I think it's Red Dragon. But it looks like Redragon. Yeah, it does look like Redragon. <laughs> Big name. I'm sorry. If you're a former Ring of Honor world champion and a multi time, I think, tag team champion, along with the until recently the the, the Ring of Honor television champion. Yeah. So that's a big name. Your, yeah. no, your prediction's off, man. Yeah. I'll one be one more. I'll put it. How about this? What? If one more Kyle O'Reilly level name gets signed, so two in addition, so two Kyle O'Reilly equals one Kenny Omega. Hat. No, it 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 equals one Adam Cole. Okay, okay. it Adams, it, yeah, it definitely See, it definitely bests one Marty Skrull. I don't know, man. <laughs> You're all in on Marty Skrull. He's going places this year. <laughs> oh man, the villain. All right. Um, Here's another story. We're still on Hardy Watch 2017. Does mm-hmm. WWE still want the Hardys? Now, we kind of reported on this a little while yeah, ago. Yeah, while, a while ago. According to Wrestling Observer, the answer to your question that you just posed is yes, WWE is still interested in signing the Hardys. Yeah, both their contracts are up in February of this year, uh, and Matt is trying to negotiate. He's, apparently right now he's trying to get more creative control so that he can... He can this is great! So he can see through his broken... Universe. Mm-hmm. He has his own he has a shared vision. universe, he his has own vision. vision, and I'm sure he understands that the WWE is just one more playground for that vision. No, no, he's trying to get creative control with TNA. Oh, I thought he was trying to negotiate. No, 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 oh, no. TNA. Oh, 
He's not going to get creative control over his character in WWE. Are you insane? I'd fit, no, I, I think he could probably ask for mm, some level of creative control. Level, but not more than he's will, getting now. Here's my thing. I will guarantee you, if he's talking to the WWE, one of the points oh, on I'm the sure table is. is I want creative control. That's what I'm talking I'm about. I'm sure it is. Yeah. But he's not going to get so, it. What, yeah, what, how much... How much more creative control can you get? Thought, you literally had total nonstop I, deletion. I already thought he was he was the head booker. <laughs> he, for like they're the only good programming they have, he is the head booker. I know. My point stands. I guarantee if the WWE is if he's talking WWE, he's saying okay. But no, I, I agree with I you. I kind of need to keep doing my. I agree. Shit. I agree with you in that, but he's not going to get the level of creative control he wants. At WWE. Well, nobody gets what they want in anything in life. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure if if he went to TNA and said, "All right, I want this," or "I'm gone." They will give it to him. No, I no, we, we completely agree on that. I'm just saying, one of his sticking points of WWE has to be: look, if you want broke, if you want Matt Hardy, I need to do some of my broken yeah, shit the I'm, way I want. And to I'm do not it. disagreeing with that. Okay, all right, making sure. But he's not getting the level that he wants from WWE. That's uh, my point. I agree. I agree with that. All right, we agree. We all know that they're like, not that's, going. They're not. That's going, an obvious point. They're not going to WWE. They're you don't think going, so? No. Because I think for that reason, the Heat probably has a vision of what he wants to do, and that vision will likely be compromised because he has to run everything through Vince. And Vince has a final say. You're right. I know. I know. There's no way that he'd be able to put in his contract, I want A, B, C, or D, and I want it carried out this way contractually. Yeah. That I don't think would ever exist in nope. a WWE contract if your name isn't Hulk Hogan. Yep. Um, still, that'd be great. That'd be, I don't know. You never know. Maybe Vince will sit down with him. And, uh, I love you. I got a great idea for you. You're broken, but you're also fashion nice. <laughs> Matt, let me ask you something. Pre cum yay or nay? <laughs> uh, Pre cum deleted. <laughs> it's All obsolete. Right. It's obsolete. Speaking of TNA, that was my favorite story of the week, Larson. This, I'm so glad you left this to be the main event. So. According to P uh, Pro Wrestling Sheet and, and Pro Wrestling Insider, who first reported Insider. on it, and then Pro Wrestling Sheet confirmed and also added some additional details. Slap nuts himself is coming back to TNA, yep. baby. Jeff Jarrett is returning to the company he founded, co-founded, um, as an executive consultant, and apparently what he's did he a, used to do. He used to do this, but with the two fingers. Yeah, and then wouldn't he do something like this? But he'd always end up with, with this. That's what he ended up with. So Jeff Jarrett, Double J, oh god, is is, is an executive. Just when we thought he was out, they pull him back in. Is an executive consultant with TNA, and apparently he's already uh, back to work at the most recent Impact tapings. And uh, I guess Dutch Mantel, oh. Zeb Coulter, oh well, that's cool, is being brought in as he well. He named Stone Cold Steve Austin. He did. Well, he named him Steve, Steve Austin. Austin. Yeah. So, what do you think, Double J, Jeff Jarrett? Slap nuts himself yeah. is going to bring to the table. Uh, he's going to bring the idea of him booking himself as a world champion. Well, apparently, from almost I, what I read is that he's going to be exclusively <clears throat> backstage. He's not going to be an on-camera character for now. Would you like to place a bet as to how long it, that would last? Um, I really don't think you would. But you know, we, a week of a week of slap nut shirt says that he's he's back in front of the cameras within a month. Within oh, a yeah. month, it's possible. Um, I mean, we 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 we've, we've been critical of his drawing power as oh, a wrestler, look. but he's been in the industry his entire life. I'm sure he has a good mind for it. I'm sure Jeff Jarrett has a very good mind for the industry. I I, I think that's I definitely think that's true. I just wonder if he has it in, if he has the discipline in himself inside. To remove himself from any conversation of him appearing in front Let of the camera. Let me ask you this. I'm sure you don't know the answer He's to it. He's not a draw. But I'm going to ask you nonetheless. Okay. Did he have any uh, on-camera role in Global Force? Yeah. Oh, he did? Yes. Oh, okay. They did remember that because they co- or they were... Um, I, mean, I mean, outside of the whole angle he did with TNA where he won the King of the Mountain Belt. I mean, just like at their shows, did he show up and have any sort of role? Do you Wait, know? in Global Force? Yeah. Remember, he joined the Bullet Club. At Wrestle oh, Kingdom, yeah. uh, ten was it or nine? Nine. nine. I think it was nine. Okay, I think it was nine because yeah, ten was AJ. But it was all to promote Global Force, right? Yeah, because remember Re that was after Finn left. Yeah, before AJ came in, right? Uh, after Finn, before AJ, I believe, 
And I think that's because Global Force was helping to distribute the English version of mm. Wrestle Kingdom mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. the States. That's right. Uh, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, so, yes, he joined the Bullet Club. He joined the Bullet Club. Well, one could hope. And then, yeah, I know. I know. I don't know. Look, here's my thing. As much as we dog Jeff Jarrett here on the show, it would be funny in that manner for him to show up on camera. How about this? Because he can't help himself. How about this? Broken oh, Jeff Jarrett. Oh, I, I completely agree. Broken Jeff Jarrett. I completely agree. Because I think he's probably got a decent sense of humor. I would hope so. I think he, I think he can be tongue-in-cheek. I don't know. You know what? If Jeff Jarrett, just by virtue of the fact that we wear his slap nut shirt as as the as the losing side of it's predictions punishment. It's punishment. as punishment, there's a I don't know, I'd probably I'd probably watch it'd, it'd probably get me to watch. So he is a draw for Steve. He's a draw for me in a way that nobody really wants to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Like I feel like. I just to see him do that stuff would be funny in in a way that TNA wouldn't want us to be laughing at. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. In int- unintentional humor. Exactly. But like you said, watching Matt Broken Matt Hardy and Jeff Jarrett interact might be entertaining. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Broken Jeff Jarrett. I, my, my mind is so, it's such a jumble be- of Jeff Jarrett because of how we, you know, so it's so weird. I know. Do you think Vince Russo is really happy right now? Because he's going to get another yeah. shot at I writing that too, yeah. actual wrestling. If that's the outcome, if Jarrett brings Russo aboard in any capacity, that's not good for TNA. No, man. I don't think this is good for TNA, dude. Bro, I don't think it's good for TNA. They need somebody fresh. Get the. I know he's working with The Rock right now, but get Brian Gortz is his back. Gortz. 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 Yeah, him. Get him. I don't know. Poach somebody from the WWE. Have I don't know. I mean, there's plenty of former WWE writers out there because the turnover rate seems so astronomically high. I I would like to think that there is some, you know, at at WWE, there's a low level writer that watches our show. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering there's a high level writer at TNA who watches our show. You mean Jeff Jarrett? Oh man, I don't know. You yeah. think Broken Matt Hardy knows who wa- we are? <laughs> we have to watch ourselves. Like our show is growing, and I love I know, it. But I we know. have to watch ourselves because Jeff Jarrett. Somebody's going to tell Jeff Jarrett, "Hey Jeff, watch this. Look at here. Who are these guys? Who are these slap nuts? <laughs> Look, they what you they 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 put on your shirt as punishment, Jeff. Bring them on TNA. I'll smash some guitars over their head. He's you're, like Crizzly. You're not helping the cause right there by saying, by doing that impersonation of him. I like your question here. What will Double J bring to the table? He'll bring an amazing championship run. Yeah, he'll 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 bring a squash match: Jeff Jarrett versus Bobby Lashley, and Double J wins. Double J wins the X division belt. Remember his weird outfit from like '95 in the WWE? He had a lot of weird outfits. He did. He had like a cowboy hat with like LED lights. And yeah, like glasses with LED yeah. lights. It, the cat. The hat said Double J. And then he had like 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 strips of clothing. Yeah, that was the worst. That was the worst. And then he had like Road Dog as like a buddy. Yeah, but he was the roadie. He was the roadie. It was all bad, man. It was all bad. But at this point, I kind of appreciate. But bad. you know, he is one of the most decorated champions of all time. I know because it was like that. Like I know because because of his dad. No, I know why. But I'm saying, like, if I ever create a wrestling promotion, chances are Alabama is going to be the most decorated champion there is. It's like Vern Gagne. It was his promotion. The only person he can rely on or Von Erich. Of course, his kids were the most decorated because the oh, only yeah. people he can rely on. I know. Otherwise, Lawler's going to run away with the belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I understand all that. Let's answer some questions. Answer some questions. Yeah. Matthew Denny. Could Undertaker beat Cena mm-hmm. Mania to lose at Survivor Series in a retirement match? Mm-hmm. So is... Legacy. Legacy. Will be defined by Survivor Series because that's where he, he debuted, that Survivor Series. Um, yeah, there'd, there'd be a certain amount of, uh, of uh, symmetry there, mm-hmm. of full circle-ishness mm-hmm. yeah. there. Yeah, I could see that. It's possible. 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 You think, well, I don't know, man. You think he'd lose a retirement match at Survivor Series? Yeah, they could hype it up that way. Oh, they yeah, yeah. It, you know, that they want to bring Survivor Series back. Oh, yeah. The, That'd, the be big. That'd be big. Level. That would be huge. That'd be big. Where's Survivor Series this year? Houston. Planet Houston. Are mm-hmm. we going to go to that? Well, maybe. We'll see. Maybe. We'll see. 
situation is. Western States Heritage Champion Matthew E. Williams Esquire, a.k.a. The Big Fish in a Small, Small, Crappy Pond. One of the top stars in fun wrestling. Exactly. Uh, He says, I watched Wrestle Kingdom, and in between tweeting with MF Steve here, he was looking at rumors. Do you think this is really the first of the last matches for Ricochet on the independent circuit before joining NXT? And would you let him keep his name gimmick upon joining the WWE? Um, to answer the first part of that question, um, no. He said that he's going after the New Japan Junior Heavyweight? Is that yep, right? he wants to win that before he does really anything else. And he also said in, in an interview I read with him that uh, he doesn't just want to go to WWE. Mm-hmm. He wants... He wants he wants a Finn Balor type route. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's going to be a couple more years. Yeah, and at that point, he's going to be such a big name that, yes, of course, they're going to definitely let him keep his name. I personally just hope that they let him keep his little plastic crown Mm -hmm. that he wears to the ring. Mm -hmm. I really hope that crown is made of, like, quality stuff. It looks very Mm plasticky. Crowns aren't a good look on anybody. When's the last time you saw a crown that you were like, oh, that was cool? Crown. I don't know. Did Booker T wear a crown when he He was King Booker? He did. There you go. There you go. Anything Booker wears is great. Yeah. Yeah. Ty Perez. Hey, friendos. With crowds being so supportive of certain heel characters, do you think it would be acceptable to have an occasional match between two heel personas? Maybe not a full-on feud, but just like a one-off. You can still make heels versus heels work. Because, you know, in in most circumstances, someone is just to be more heel than the other. Know what I mean? Okay, let's 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 grab an example here. Kevin Owens, he's a heel, right? Mm-hmm. If you had Kevin Owens versus Rusev, it would be vastly entertaining, but people would be cheering. Yeah, you could do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. You could do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could do it. Yeah. What, what about two pure heels? Like I know. That's what the, I was the Miz too. is a pure heel. Yeah. The Miz against. I mean, Rusev is kind of a pure heel, but people are starting to Yeah, the him. crowd was starting to... The people would start getting behind Rusev. That's kind of the problem, is that unless you had two pure heels, like, who's another pure well, heel? That's what I'm trying to say, is that one one, one competitor will always kind of outheel the other one. Yeah, I know. Somebody's going to eventually root for somebody. Yeah. So it's it's probably tricky to pull off. You know? I don't think you could necessarily... I don't know. There's probably a way you can do it with <clears throat> two pure heels. Miz caliber heels. I'll put it this way. If like a pure heel. Yeah. If like the Miz. Had, How about this? Let me ask you this. Charlotte against Alexa Bliss. They're two pure heels. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think. One would kind of have to. I mean, you still have to get heat. You can't ever do that. Yeah. It'd be tough. <laughs> it, that, that's a great. I no, because that's, ever, but be that tough. is the perfect example. Because you can never. You can't really do that. They wouldn't do that. Like no, that, they that, do it would that. just be a bad idea. Yeah. Because, yeah, who do you boo for more or less? Yeah. Nicholas Grosskirth. Uh, Larson. What? This is directed at you. Oh, okay. All right. On Tuesday's show, you said there wasn't anyone believable to win the Rumble on SmackDown. After watching SmackDown, specifically Miz dropping the IC title, what are the Miz's chances to win the Rumble? 2%. He's got to be in a match against Dean. At the I would think so. Him. Yeah. He's think not so winning too. the Rumble. No. 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 I, I will amend my statement, though. Uh, Bray Wyatt could win the Rumble, as could Randy Orton, but they're not going to. You think Baron Corbin can win? Not this year. What are his chances, though? Better than 2%. 5%. The fact that he came out and proclaimed... Wait, no, I got I got because there's 30 competitors. So all the, the percentages of all 30 competitors have to add up to 100%. Yeah, no, I get that. What are the... Okay, who's... So Miz would be like... Undertaker's point. 50%. No. No. Undertaker is, I'd say, 35%. Okay. Who are our top guys? Look, we know Lesnar's not going to win. We know Goldberg's not going to yeah, win. We know it's, what's going to happen. Undertaker. Undertaker, Jericho, Reigns. No, Reigns isn't in it. Oh, that's right. And Strowman. And Strowman. Those are the three top contenders. Okay, let's say they comprise 75%. Yeah. 25% each. Okay. I would say Baron then has a 5% chance. Because be, then it would be 27. 10% chance. 27 other competitors. That take up fifteen percent, twenty five percent of. Well, if you're taking my ten percent, what I just said, it would be eighty five percent left for twenty six competitors. Yeah, no, I believe because nobody else is going to win. I didn't nobody say, else is going to win. Well, Jericho. I just said no. We had Jericho in those three. Oh, Remember? Strowman, Undertaker, Jericho, Jericho. I'd have to sit and do the math. I would say twenty five percent each. Baron Corbin ten percent, 
and then everybody else can divide between 15 percent. I would say nobody's getting it. I would say 30 for Jericho, 30 for Undertaker, and then 20 for Strowman. Yeah, okay, I'll say that too. I'm fine with that. You think Jericho has a a, a 10 percent better chance of winning than Strowman? Really? Mm-hmm. The way they're booking Strowman? Yeah. He's going to have a really good showing of the Rumble, but something will happen that he'll get eliminated. Maybe Lesnar and Goldberg will take him out together. Ooh. It's going to take something like that. Yeah, maybe. James Rodriguez, without breaking kayfabe, why do some superstars have their entrance theme play when they interfere in a match and others don't? Do they go to the people in charge? I love this question. Yeah. Because I've thought it so often myself. Do they go to the people in charge of the entrances beforehand and state their intent to interfere? I would think that the person in charge of entrances has some creative license to determine because his what, what remember his, though this is this is this is not breaking kayfabe this is all within the world of the show itself right it's within the world of the show himself okay. so I'm thinking okay here so going along with that whoever's controlling the entrances doesn't know what's going to happen yes okay because it's not scripted yes that's what you know we're in yeah. kayfabe yeah but I would think. That in that world, they're still doing a TV show. And so that person is controlling the entrances. Therefore, simply has creative license. Vince says to him, or Triple H, or whatever the gorilla says, um, <clears throat> whoever is the alpha out there gets their music to be played. I think you're th- thinking about it way too much. This no! Is, this, this is what it is. What? This is what it is. Every wrestler that, that goes down the ramp has to pass through gorilla position. Yeah. And in my world, whoever controls the entrance themes and packages sits a gorilla. Yeah, okay, okay. So if someone comes sprinting through there at top speed to head out to the ring, obviously they don't have time to queue up their entrance package. But if they take their time a little bit more to get out there, they know they're coming, they see they're coming, they have enough time to press that button. So by the time they hit the ramp, their music's on. That's what it is. They're not a gorilla then. Who's oh, not a gorilla? Are you saying they're watching them roll up? Yeah, because you have to pass through the gorilla to get to the, the stage. Okay, but hold on a second. So they literally see people walk by on their way to the stage. So imagine we're in gorilla. Vince Explain is, how others don't then. Because they're just running through there. They don't have time oh, to hit the button. Oh, okay. I think it's this. Some of them talk to the people, but others are so incensed that they don't talk to them. Here's another thing, too. Wait, no, I know. I my moan in my original example. No, my original example is we'll see, they get creative license. Why would they not then go ahead and opt to hit the button for the music? Here's what it is. Huh. When they don't play the music, it's not because they go through gorilla. Yeah. Or down the ramp, so they go around the back. Oh yeah, on the on the, on the back side of the stage, and come out that way to the uh, to the arena. So that a gorilla, they don't see them. That's what it is, Steve. Sometimes they don't get their entrance music played because a guy who presses the button to play the music just doesn't see them. I don't think it's that. But th- th- then there, then okay. But but the problem with that is there is an established pattern that we could then test that theory against, and I guarantee it wouldn't hold water. None I the think theories. it's more. None I think no, it does. With. Because it's all the creative license, and that's subjective in the guy's head. Oh, he doesn't deserve the music. That wasn't a powerful enough but statement. But then if, if Vince if Vince disagrees with that, that guy's fired. But he's really good. Maybe Vince is the guy that does all this. That wouldn't surprise me. In which case, whatever theory we come with is out the window. Well, no, it isn't, because our theory is simply whatever Vince wants, Vince gets. Yeah. And that's the ultimate theory about the WWE universe. Uh, let's see. Universal Jones. Hey, you pencil neck geeks. You're fashion police. Seeing the Goldberg Reigns double spear made me mark out a bit. Me too. So who has the best and worst spears in wrestling? Goldberg and Rhino the best. Late edge for his, for his running waist hug is worst. Late edge. Oh, late, late, late edge. period. Not edge, dead yes. edge. Yeah. Edge is still alive. He is. I liked Edges. It is a running waist hug, though. I like Johnny Gargano because he takes a different approach to it. He <laughs> I, uh, leaps through the ropes. And oh, okay, people. yeah. Um, it's not as powerful as Goldberg's, obviously, or Reigns, but it's a creative take on the spear, and that's why I like who it. Who else had a spear, though? Charlotte has a spear. Mm. Honestly, I, I think it'd be Goldberg. Didn't, Here's the didn't, thing about didn't uh, Steve McMichael have a spear? Did, wasn't it a tackle his finishing move? You mean he just stumbled into people? Pretty much. Probably sounds about right. Here's why Goldberg's is the best. Do you want to know why Goldberg's the best? Because he broke Lesnar's rib with it. Well, yeah. 
but kind kind of related to that. Mm. Goldberg didn't know what he was doing. Mm. So Goldberg legitimately, but we, we no, know he wasn't no. a safe worker. No, he was a football player though, and the spear is essentially a tackle. That's like exactly. a textbook tackle. Okay, but what's the difference between a football tackle and a pro wrestling spear? The difference is I'm trying to protect you on one, and the other one I'm trying to kill you. We can just dial it back like 25%. Yeah, but I don't think anybody ever told that to Goldberg. I don't think he ever knew that. Because that's why his is best. Because it's the closest to a real football tackle. Okay. Because he didn't know what he was doing. I'll agree with that. Yeah. He's not a safe worker. He retired Bret Hart, you know. I've heard that before, yeah. Goldberg retired me, you know. And it wasn't good, you know. <laughs> Who wants some Twinkies, yeah? El Apuesto. Eh, no, 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 no. Sorry. El Apuesto, the most dapper luchador. How'd you like on the Wrestle Kingdom when they would say English words randomly? Oh, yeah. Like if they deliver, they'd say, you know, they'd be talking and they're say, saying things in Japanese and all of a sudden they'd say Wrestle Kingdom. What I what I was curious about is is on the graphics. Mm-hmm. Sometimes names would be all in Japanese characters. Yeah, I don't know why. And sometimes they'd be, you know, in in you know, like Cody Rhodes was just Cody. I would doubt it's the wrestler's preference because I would think. Well, I think out of a I, point I, of no, pride, you know what? I think for Cody's it would be because that's him branding himself for a world, worldwide audience. Here's my here's my problem with that though. Hmm. I think. That if it was the wrestler's preference, there would be some sort of odd, and not even odd really, some way of respecting the culture. Mm-hmm. And so all non, uh, all all foreign wrestlers would probably all put their names in Japanese. Mm. I would, I really suspect that. I wonder if it's a thing where if it's properties owned by New Japan, could they be. would be that in Japanese. Be. That could be versus you know Cody. That's his name. I wonder, or I wonder if. But I have to, I'd have to go through. What if it's this? Check. What if there is no direct Japanese translation for certain things, and what if there is for Juice Robinson? Could be because Juice is a word that's got. There's got to be Japanese characters for Juice. Yes, uh, yes. Robinson. I don't know. I don't know. That seems common enough. There might be. I don't know. That's my guess. That for whatever there's a translation for. Yeah. Howdy, friendos. You are abducted by an intergalactic pro wrestling federation. You have to pick five superstars to fight their five champions in a five-on-five bout. Only one superstar who was at their peak for each decade for the last 50 years. Who represents the two, uh, 2010s, the 2000s, the 90s, 80s, and 70s? You have to fight five superstars to fight so their five champions. Top people, top guys from each decade. But I'm going to assume that these are like aliens mm-hmm. and they're like dominant. So I need, I want dominant people. Well, naturally. The 2000s, I'm going to pick Brock Lesnar. Okay. The 2010s, 2010s. We'll do Shinsuke. Yeah, we'll do Shinsuke because he's already an alien. He knows there are people. The 90s. Is it The Rock or is it Stone Cold? Man, are you kidding me? Big Show. The 90s would be Big Show. What about Kane? He was mad. Oh, Kane. Man, Undertaker. Man. Undertaker. Undertaker. He's Undertaker. Supernatural. Try dealing with the powers of darkness. 80s. Aliens. The 1980s. Oh, Andre. Oh, yeah. No, 70s Andre. 80s. Macho he, Man. <laughs> he was definitely an alien. All right. Those are all great answers. <laughs> That's it. We don't have a trivia game yet. No. No, we got to figure it out. We'll work on that. You know what we should do? We should do like a Pictionary thing where... You have to draw someone's gimmick. Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. That's perfect. We we put all a bunch of gimmicks in a hat and then pick it out, see what it is, draw it, and then if the other person wait, but that doesn't make no, sense. No, I would I would pick the, the gimmick out of the hat and then I'd have to draw it and you'd have to guess it. But then who would get the point? You would get the point or I would get the point. Because you could just draw a crappy. If I get it, I don't get the point because you could just draw a crappy and I wouldn't yeah, get so it. I would get the point. You would get the point. And we just really have to try to guess what it is. Yeah, because Can't, it's fun. Couldn't, couldn't feign stupidity. How about this? Or we could do something like whoever draws it gets two points. Or if you guess it correctly, you get one point. We'll figure it out. But I love yeah. this Pictionary idea. I think yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, it's good. Anyways, that's it for now. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.